right, so welcome to our presentation. We got a lot of great stuff to share with you today, and I know you're going to be blown away. That said, I must share with you a quick word of warning. A lot of what we're going to be showing you here today flies directly in the face of conventional oil field thinking. And some of our ideas, which we'll be sharing with you, are going to create huge amounts of conflict for the status quo. That said, it's our belief that time and money-saving ideas in oil and gas production should not only be considered, but encouraged. So the things that Mobile is doing are valuable and positive. Mobile creates proactive and engaged pumpers. It alleviates needless work from the back office, and it keeps engineers and supervisors focused on the task at hand, which is maximizing oil production while minimizing costs. And the best part is, people actually want to use this stuff. So, if you like to be challenged by new ideas and you're open to new ways of doing things, this presentation is for you. Or, if you simply like the idea of profiting more in your oil and gas operations, reducing overhead, and bringing more calm to the way which we work, this presentation is most definitely for you. So, this brings me to our topic of discussion today, which is how to achieve an unprecedented level of cash flow and capital efficiency in your oil and gas operations in less than an afternoon using nothing more than simple mobile workflows all without a lick of pushback from your pumpers or your field crew. So here are just a few examples of the kind of return on, on investment we're achieving for our clients. First up, I'd like to introduce you a small independent oil and gas operator out of Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, by the name of Marsh Oil and Gas. Susie Agee is the VP of operations there. And basically, Susie and her team were managing the production via Excel, paper-based workflows like gauge sheets, text messages, emails, and the like. One of Susie's biggest challenges was maintaining communication with her pumpers and supervisor in the field so that she could stay on top of any issues or opportunities that might present themselves. In addition to contracted field supervision, Susie was spending a lot of money on time-intensive activities like the assembly of production reports that might have been necessary to running the business, but really weren't a great use of her field supervisor's time. Susie rolled out the grease book in her operations, completely freed up her field super supervisor to focus on production instead of paperwork, and reported a 50% decrease in her G&A costs, and that includes her monthly grease book charges. And we all know where that 50% falls, right? It goes right to the bottom line. Next up, we got another independent operator by the name of Drop Time Exploration, this time based out of Medicine Lodge, Kansas. So essentially, Bryant, who's a controller over at Drop Time, and his team were dealing with geographical issues, which is a real common challenge in the oil field. So him and his three partners were spread out across Kansas, um, three of them there and actually one of them up in Canada. One of their biggest challenges was figuring out how to keep everybody informed and on the same page without all the nonstop calls and texts and emails. And once we got Bryant on the grease book, it didn't take long for drop time to see the benefit. From what Bryant told us, it was about 10 or 12 days into them using the app that they noticed a drop in production because it was only their first week into the month. Uh, before they got on the grease book, it would have taken them another two to three weeks before they would receive the purchaser statements and ultimately identified the issue. However, because Bryant and his entire team now had full transparency into their field operations with the grease book, they were able to get out there and the very next day, get it zipped up and get the issue taken care of. So most operators, what they tell me at $50 oil, a two to, uh, two to three year payout is generally the yardstick by which they decide whether to take on a new initiative or not. Bryant said the app paid for itself within 12 days and since it's paid out multiple times going forward. So the grease book's kind of like having an automated production loss avoidance annuity, just kicking cash to your bottom line, which is exactly the kind of fail safe I want in my business. And nothing beats a 12 day immediate payoff and gratification from an investment in our operations. So look, I mean, we got a ton of examples just like this, which we're going to be presenting to you. That said, we'd also like to go over some highlights you can expect to learn about during our time together today. So first up, how to replicate an extreme competitive advantage, which cost the majors tens of millions of dollars and took more than a decade of R&D for no money down on your part in less than 20 minutes. Number two, how one oil man, which I personally know, 3 x his well count without adding a dime to his G&A expenses. Number three, how to offload 50% of your in-house administrative work to the field without a lick of pushback from your pumpers. 
Four, how to limit your exposure to fluctuations in the price of oil in less than 48 hours without any expensive hedging contracts by using the principles of a long forgotten Italian economist. And five, how to slash your downtime by 38% without breaking the bank or investing in some expensive remote monitoring. I mean, this is a beast of a presentation today. We've made some pretty bodacious claims here, and we got a lot of ground to cover. So we also have several small and mid-sized operators hailing from half a dozen different oil patches the country over. Bryant Tice, controller, drop tie and exploration, Medicine Lodge, Kansas. Mr. Dallas Golden, CEO, Golden Oil and Ranch, Midland, Texas. Sam Wilson, engineering manager, Burke Royalty, Wichita Falls, Texas. Nancy Berger, Administrative Manager, WD Short Oil Company, Oxford, Kansas, and Matthew Ciardiello, CEO, Poplar Resources, Poplar, Montana. So each of these operators leveraged the grease book in their operations, and they're going to weigh in throughout the presentation. So if you're intrigued, and I know that you are, strap yourself in and sharpen your pencil to take some notes. And for those of you who stick around to the end, we have a special gift, which we're going to give you, which could potentially be worth several thousand dollars to your business. So without further ado, let's dive in. All right. So this presentation today is for two types of operators. The first group is those of you who are managing your pumpers and your operations via cobbled together paper gauge sheets, text messages, email, and spreadsheets. The second is those of you who are using another production software system and simply aren't happy with it. So usually when I speak with small and mid-sized operators, they're frustrated by the inaccurate production reports they're receiving from their pumpers in the field. Not only must the operators go in and clean them up, which ain't a good use of anybody's time, they're also stuck calling the same pumpers to get their data in. It's always the same pumpers. So maybe you're here today because as opposed to your pumper forgetting to tell you when there's a problem in the field and you not finding out about it to the end of the month after reviewing your purchaser statements, you'd like to always be notified of these issues. Or maybe you see an opportunity in the market, you wanna go out and make several acquisitions and you're looking for a system to help you scale. No matter your situation, you're looking for ways to become more profitable and more capital efficient than you are today. And my guess is you got um, some access to some damn good talent, uh, perhaps an engineer, geologist, a field manager, or supervisor who's extremely knowledgeable in the field and extremely mechanically inclined but they can't always do their best work because they don't have access to the data when they need it. After uh, talking with thousands of independent operators, what most operators are telling us is that they want a centralized place, not only to store their production data, but also to access their well history files and records from which everybody on their team can reference from anywhere, anytime, on any device. Tried the spreadsheets, the phone calls, the text messages with your pumpers. You tried to standardize the communication and reports, but it simply didn't work. The price of oil is volatile, as we all know, and you want results now. You're motivated. I know you're smart, and you have the necessary resources at your disposal. You just need a system that brings you leverage and is going to pull it all together. A system that enables you to predictably scale your operations by simply adding more pumpers and more wells. Or for those of you who are happy with the size of your operations already, a system which is going to bring you 10 times the results with a third of the effort. All that said, the first thing I want to mention is that if you've failed at some sort of initiative to streamline your operations in the past, it ain't your fault. As an independent operator, you're forced to work in a unique environment unlike any other business I know. Where most companies have the luxury of direct oversight of their employees and product in-house, a good amount of your employees and production assets are geographically distributed over several fields or counties, uh, perhaps across several different states. And not only does this introduce a lot of room for error and miscommunication, but it also makes it exceptionally difficult to know what's really going on in the field. And although we'd like to trust our pumpers, and to a large extent we do, if they're contract guys, uh, their goals aren't necessarily aligned with yours. I mean, you're at odds because you need somebody to show up at the well each day and give it the attention it deserves while your pumper's looking to max out the number of wells he could tend to on his route. So there's a lot of uncertainty in this business. However, one thing is for sure. If you simply stay put and you don't do something about it, whether it's the next COVID or it's something else, unfortunately, you're going to continue to expose yourself to the volatility, uncertainty, and reduced cash flows inherent to most operators in the business. 
So if you struggled in the past with getting your lease operating expenses down, or maybe you tried to reduce your G&A and simply couldn't find a place to cut, I want to put those fears to rest. You can do this, and today we're going to show you how. But before we move on, I'd like to quickly address that second group we have here today as well. Those that are already using another production software and simply aren't happy with it. Unfortunately, the story is always the same. I mean, there's a lot of complexity in these legacy tools, and it's simply overkill for your operations. You're also probably fed up with being nickel and dimed for support and well setup fees, and you're looking for a simpler solution at a better price. So let me make something very clear to you. The big oil and gas software companies, the Slumbergers, the P2s, the Quorums, the IHS, they want you to think you need some sort of complex, read expensive system be, uh, to be successful. I'm here to tell you that you don't. These companies have their own reasons for wanting you to believe this, but it's simply not true. And today we're going to prove this to you. You see this new environment in which we find ourselves, it's creating a lot of turmoil. But for those of you who maintain an open mind and know where to look, it's also creating a hell of a lot of opportunity. So you probably have a dream. It's not that much different from mine, which is to succeed in the oil patch and make an impact. So from our time today, you're going to get a whole new perspective on how to run your operations more profitably and more streamlined than you ever thought humanly possible. So remember, there's an old Chinese proverb, if you chase two rabbits, you will catch none. And to an extent, this is true for your oil and gas operating business. How so? Well, because as an oil and gas operator, there are two activities you must focus on to realize your most profitable and capital efficient operation. First, you must replace your reserves. So whether you're wildcatting, drilling offset wells, or simply opening up production behind pipe, you must continue to replace production or risk fading away. However, because the amount of cash and capital required to drill wells, depending upon market uh, conditions, we're not always able to make this our main focus, which brings us to our second activity, which is to focus on those wells that are already producing. And the nice thing about maintaining our existing production is that we don't have to worry about recouping new capex costs. We just need to concentrate on squeezing more barrels out of the ground for less dollars. But, and there's always a but, maintaining production, as you know, has its own challenges. Why? Well, because our wells are always in decline. I mean, how can you really eke out more efficiency than you are today? How much more can you really lower your lift costs? How much staff can you really cut or are you willing to cut? So here's the conundrum of the oil and gas operator. How can we make sure we're not chasing two rabbits and figuratively ending up with none? So here's our core concept today, and it really is a very simple idea. If we focus on our existing production first, once we systemize the heck out of it, we'll be free to focus on shinier objects, which are the new wells, because we'll know our operations are 100% optimized. In the worst of times, we're going to have cash on hand because we'll be operating as lean as humanly possible. And during the best of times, we'll be free to chase after any opportunity that presents itself without neglecting our existing production because we got a system and we're working it. See, what's interesting is in our industry today, if you look at any of the majors or the large independents quarterly reports, we can see that one of the ways which they're attacking the challenge of optimizing their existing production is to focus on software and technology, pretty broad. But for example, as far as the big boys go, I mean, check this out. EOG is regarded by many as one of the best operators in the business. And look how they flaunt their 100 plus in-house apps on their quarterly report. I mean, this is a 50 page document and they got two full pages dedicated to software and technology. So as a small independent operator, I mean, you shouldn't be expected to have the funds or expertise to run your own in-house app development shop. Personally, it's my opinion that any operator, including EOG, should be focused on their core competency, which is oil and gas production, not building software, not managing software development teams. That aside, what a lot of small and mid-sized operators tell me is that they're already spread too thin. For many smaller industry players, this digital oil field the industry's been talking about for the better part of two decades, it's always been like this mirage that's laid out of reach. Why is that so? Well, many of the current systems you find on the market require a high level of expertise to design, deploy, and operate. 
And what's, what most operators are telling us is that these legacy software systems like the Avocets and the Evens and the Field Directs are simply overkill for their operations. They're too complex for the small and mid-sized operator and the cost and energy required to run these systems doesn't justify the means. But what if you did have access to the same type of technology that only the largest of operators with the deepest of pockets were able to afford? Even better, what if you were able to one-up the big boys and have access to the same toys, but unlike them, not have to develop any of it, leaving you to focus in on what you do best, which is producing oil and gas? If you ask me, I think that'd be pretty damn cool. You see, what's interesting in all this is while large independents and the super majors have been entrenching themselves in advanced analytic software, data repositories, and these massive IT departments to oversee it all, the solution to leapfrog the largest, most sophisticated of operators has already piggybacked its way into the smaller companies. In fact, it's already made its way inside your company. How so? Well, in the pockets and the purses of the employees who work there. What the heck am I talking about? This, I'm talking about the smartphone. So one of our goals we outlined earlier was to show you how to replicate an extreme competitive advantage, which cost the majors tens of millions of dollars. It took more than a decade of R&D for no money down in less than 20 minutes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. However, to grasp the full scope of what I'm saying, you must look beyond the smartphone. So essentially, as opposed to having some large IT department, you can simply outsource the entire responsibility of your core computing process um, of your operations workflow to a third-party consumer company like an Apple, an Amazon, a Google. Not because the convenience and the amount of time they save, but also because these companies dedicate 100% of their trillion-dollar resources to providing and perfecting these services. The beauty of the smartphone is the OPEX is already spent. There's nothing to buy your guys or gals in the field because unless you've been living under a rock for the last five years, everybody already owns one of these things. Before you dismiss this idea, hold up and take a closer look at the platforms on which these simple mobile workflows exist. For example, check out this chart of the world's largest companies by market cap. In 2009, now understand this ain't 1985 or 1995, in 2009, you can see that four of the world's uh, 10 largest companies oil and gas companies. However, look at the same chart today. These oil and gas companies are nowhere to be found. And more importantly, who were they replaced by? They were replaced by the same companies that backed the smartphone meet simple mobile workflows that we're talking about. So these are the new winds of opportunity that are blowing in oil and gas folks. And understand technology is not the enemy. In fact, I'm going to go as far as to tell you that technology is the defense mechanism that will keep your doors open the next time oil drops below 20 bucks a barrel. See the cost of not hitching your wagon to mobile in, oil and, in your oil and gas operations, it's gonna come in many forms. It's gonna come in the form of not making the best decisions due to limited information, and it will come in the form of not being able to weather the next downturn because you're not running your most efficient, effective operation. In fact, the small EMP companies willing to heed the call of mobile, they're now finding themselves the envy of their larger, more sophisticated brethren. Because many of these large oil and gas operators simply can't get out of their own way to take advantage of this stuff. And what this really means for you is the cap between the large operator's ability to cost effectively manage that legacy production and the ability for you to do so just got a little bit wider. That is obviously if you're willing to adopt simple mobile workflows in your operations. So mobile is the new vehicle. Mobile workflows are the simple, lightweight, cost-effective catalyst the oil man requires to achieve his most profitable, capital-efficient operation. And mind you, Greasebook is the only company in the patch solving this particular problem for the small and mid-sized oil and gas operator today. So now before we get into the steps and how to's, you know, here's a quick background on our company, just for credibility reasons. We were founded in 2011. And at the time of recording this, we work with 260 independent oil and gas operators in 16 different states. So these range from small mom pops operating only a handful of wells to publicly traded companies operating in excess of a thousand wells. We've been nominated by the Oil and Gas Awards for new technology development of the year. We've also been featured in Hearts ENP Magazine, Society of Petroleum Engineers The Way Ahead, American Oil and Gas Reporter, Rig Zone, CNBC, and the Oil and Gas Financial Journal. However, 
My favorite article we've published to date was published in Hearts e and called The Consumerization of the Oil and Gas Enterprise. And I'm going to forward this to your email after, battery, uh, after the video is done so you can check it out. So all that to say is that today, Greasebook is the fastest growing app in the oil patch. Do not accept imitators. So me personally, my name's Greg Archbald. I'm 38 years old and I'm the founder of the company. I graduated with honors from the University of Oklahoma with a double major in energy management and finance. I wrote my honors thesis on the propagation of the global gas market via liquefied natural gas or LNG. So please understand, I don't say any of this to impress anybody, only to show you how much thinking and geeking out over oil and gas operations we do here at Greasebook. And so when I speak to operators in person or over the phone, a lot of them want to know how I got my start in oil and gas. I got my start in my family's oil and gas accounting software business, which some of you may be familiar with or even use in your operations known as SSI. And today, SSI serves, I think, around 300 investment um, production, exploration, and service companies in the oil and gas industry. So anyways, it was through my time at SSI, which I was given this unique opportunity to take an inside look into the operations of literally hundreds of oil and gas producers and how they run their companies. And this is where I began to develop my thesis on the quickest way to achieve maximum profitability and capital efficiency as an oil and gas operator. Now, I do want to make something very clear. I mean, I don't proclaim to have a deep knowledge of operating oil and gas wells. I'm not a reservoir or production engineer, and I'm not a geologist. However, given my background, I've gained unique understanding in how to run an oil and gas operating company more profitably with less overhead and less moving parts than most operators do so today. But enough about me, uh, let's dive in here. So the first rule of any technology used in a business is that automation applied to an efficient operation will magnify the efficiency. The second is that automation applied to an inefficient operation will magnify the inefficiency. This is from Bill Gates. And what, what Bill was saying here is that if you don't think through your workflows and you start adding people to a broken process, you're going to find yourself in a world of hurt. So the key idea is using people to leverage a good process multiplies your output. However, using people as a way to fix a poor process is only going to multiply your problems. And at no place did this become more clear to me than through my time spent at my family's oil and gas software company. So you're probably familiar with some of these oil and gas accounting software products. Wolfpack, OGSYS, Avatar, Bolo, Excalibur, Inertia. I could go on and on. I grew up around this stuff. But, you know, it was through my time at my family's oil and gas accounting company that I observed countless software systems of all types, all which purported to help the oil and gas operator, but many times actually ended up saddling the operator with all sorts of unintended consequences. And what do I mean by these consequences? Well, for example, just to get started with some of these legacy systems, most operators would have to purchase a server, which they'd house on premise in a closet somewhere at the office. And who the heck knows how to pick out a server? I mean, I don't know how to do this and, and I build software for a living. Um, anyways, after you go shopping for a server, you have to contact somebody to get it all set up correctly. So by the time all is said and done and everything's wired up, these two steps alone might take you five or six weeks. And remember, all this had to happen before you began to work with your new software package, mind you. And for some reason, back in the 80s and 90s, they always called them packages, a software package, a training package, support packages. So just as a side note, if ever, uh, anybody ever tries to sell you something that has to do with technology and uses the word package as a descriptor, I'd advise running the other direction and we'll get more into that and why here in a moment. But so now that you're done with your setup and laying the groundwork, it's time to get down to learning the system upon which you probably got sold this training package. Um, you know, a task that would sometimes take months of training. So you had the choice. You could either fly to the software company, you know, the office of the oil and gas software provider, or perhaps they'd come and train you on site, which was obviously preferable, but then you'd have to foot the bill for flight and hotel and meals, not to mention 150 bucks an hour in training fees. So the process for learning one of these systems, it could go on for months, or in some cases years before the operator would be fully operational and proficient with their new software. And what if you had like buyer's remorse or any kind of regret about your purchase? Well, too bad. You're locked in, buddy. Throw your hands up. You're strapped in and you're on the legacy software roller coaster. And just when you're so nauseated and you think this ride can't get any worse, well, it does. So finally, once everything is set up, 
I mean, your server's in the back closet. It's humming along. You've got everybody trained up. Well, ask yourself, what happens, because it seemingly always does, when your bookkeeper falls ill, quits their job, gets fired, runs off with the UPS delivery guy? I only bring that up because I've seen this happen. When this happens, then you start the weeks and months of training process at 150 bucks an hour all over again to train up your new employee. And this... This is what I like to call death by a thousand cuts. I mean, it's crazy. The money, the energy, the time invested, all this hassle the oil and gas producers have to go through all to simply support a task that wasn't even part of their core competency. I mean, these companies, your oil and gas operators, they extract petroleum from deep within the earth. That's what you do. You shouldn't be spending your time installing servers and training up employees and dealing with the fallout of some new system. And if you're not too fired up about like this, like I obviously am, and you take a step back, you could make the argument that if the operator were to saddle themselves with enough of these legacy software systems, the overhead and bloat created just to keep the people trained up and to keep these systems running would begin to hamper the operator more than they helped them. So if you don't have direct experience with a system like this, or you're simply too young to know about it, consider yourself lucky, but I have no doubt you can go hear about it from a coworker or an associate. Um, so that experience, anyways, you can tell weighed very heavily on my mind because these oil and gas software companies were paying all this money and spending all this time working on a broken workflow just so they could spend what was left of their time and energy focused on getting back to the real matter at hand, which is the production of oil and gas. So anyways, around the same time I was witnessing all this, a guy by the name of Steve Jobs had just announced the release of the iPhone. And while today most of us take this for granted, back then, having a computer in your pocket and these sort of apps that you could download from the app store was quite remarkable. And after having worked with all these operators and having seen all these broken processes, well, we knew this simple solution had to be applied to the oil field. Why? Well, because apps are simple. They don't require all the setup, the training, the overhead that the legacy systems require. And after having worked you know, with hundreds of these operators, I remember when it came to overseeing the production of the field, most operators were stuck you know, with one of two choices. So behind door number one, pen and paper gauge sheets and Excel-based workflows. Or behind door number two, you had legacy production software that either ran on a Palm Pilot or a clunky tough book laptop. So much like the legacy accounting software, this legacy production software had many complexities of its own. There was generally a builder to set up all your wells and like a user admin component, which enables you to set permissions for the different users in your business. There's a PC data entry, which the pumpers would sort of use in the field to enter their data. You had a data editor to enable the production clerk to log in and edit all the pumper data in case there were mistakes. A production explorer, which is necessary simply to get at your production reports. Look, if it sounds complicated, it's because it is. And so to us, it was so obvious that this sort of lightweight, cost-effective, simple mobile device, it, it would change all that. So mobile workflows, they don't run on a Palm Pilot or some clunky tough book laptop. Mobile workflows uh, don't require an operator to go out and purchase a bunch of laptops for their pumpers because obviously your guys in the field can use a device they already own. And if somebody quits or retires in your company, which is happening a lot in the oil field, because as you know, a lot of our pumpers are from an older generation, a new pumper could be spun up and trained in about five or 10 minutes. So anyways, after all that, the operator no longer has to struggle to know what's going on in the oil field. No more calls to his pumper asking to get his data in. No more re-keying of paper gauge sheets. No more clunky tough books or the complicated overpriced software that runs on them. Something which can simply be downloaded from the App Store or Google Play if you're an Android user and completely transform your operations in about 20 seconds. So if you're looking for the easy button in your operations, folks, I mean, this is it. So you might be asking, look, as an independent oil and gas operator, how specifically can I apply these mobile workflows um, to my operations? So let's do a quick recap, and then I'm going to show you. So unlike legacy production, production software, excuse me, mobile is simple. And, you know, it's our opinion that simplicity is no longer some nice to have. It's a requirement. Uh, two, mobile is pervasive. It's in everybody's purse or pocket. So unlike spinning up a server in your back closet, there's nothing to purchase, uh, nobody to hire, nothing like that. It's all very simple and straightforward. 
Um, mobile's fluid. Employees and new hires can learn this stuff in a matter of minutes, not weeks or months. Mobile's cost effective, no need to purchase or repair laptops, and it's, it's self-serve, and that's the beauty of it. Um, and to the extent possible, operators must focus, you know, the idea is to focus on your core competency, not developing software, not, uh, you know, managing a team of developers. And again, the best part is the folks in the field and in the office, they actually want to use this stuff. We're on it all day. I'm guilty of it. Um, people of all ages are guilty of this, and people, people really enjoy the mobile stuff. It's simple. It's easy. So... We've got a next section. It's sort of an action item. We like to call it thinking time. And here, there, there's nothing to think about. <laughs> I mean, this is the beauty of mobile because there really are no action items. There's, there's nothing to do. It's, it's simple. You know, we're going to give you plenty of things to work on and apply in the next 10 or 15 minutes. But mobile permeates the society. And it's not one of those things. So quick question and answer section. You know, I'm just a small operator. Does mobile really apply to me? And really, you know, you are precisely who this applies to. I mean, everything is already done for you. You're already using this workflows and maybe, you know, you might not even realized it. So Verizon, at and have already taken care of all the connectivity for you. Um, Amazon and Microsoft have already built the servers and databases we use to collect all this info and don't have to be operated or maintained by you. So I don't know about you, but I'd rather have Microsoft running my backup and systems than have a server in the back closet that's susceptible to fire, water damage, and the like. So, you know, some of the biggest companies in the world have come together to serve the independent oil and gas operator. So unless you like just working harder than you have to, the efficiency is there. It's just up for you to go and pick it up. Um, you know, and this simply leaves you to focus on the drilling of new wells, the production of existing wells, and any necessary acquisitions or divestitures. And that's it. Um, so we're going to move on to sort of um, step one. Um, you know, in any business, there are rules, which essentially are traditions and expectations that most people accept as true. And the oil and gas industry is full of them. That said, you know, many of these rules are probably due for some questioning, uh, if not a little breaking. All too often, you know, I see operators holding on to long held views, calling them rules. However, many times these rules can simply be reclassified as sort of more of a bad habit. And bad habits make for all sorts of struggles in business and life, as you know, because, um, but because, you know, these habits are mistaken for rules, most people don't realize that they could simply be changed. And today, I'd like to talk about a man who I'm sure you're familiar with. He's on the list of the nation's 10 most wealthy oil men. And on that list, you're going to find names like the Koch brothers, uh, the Hunts, George Kaiser, among others. However, of the 10 wealthiest oil and gas men and women, uh, only two of them are self-made, which particularly draws my eye. I like this. Uh, Jeffrey Hildebrand, Hillcorp Energy, Houston, Texas, and the other who's the focus of our story today, Mr. Harold Hamm of Continental Resources, Oklahoma City. So, you know, when we talk about Harold while addressing small and mid-sized operators, you know, most of them roll their eyes and ask, you know, what are we talking about Harold for? I mean, I'm not Harold. I'm not Continental Resources. And quite frankly, I don't want to be Continental Resources. But simply entertain this thought just for a moment. I mean, will you agree that Continental Resources is a relatively successful company? I mean, last year, Continental Resources extracted 82 million barrels of oil. That's 225,000 barrels of oil per day, 9,375 barrels of oil an hour, and 156 barrels a minute. That's cooking. So Harold makes more oil in a minute than a lot of us watching this today will produce all, all day long. You know, a $50 oil, that's $11 million a day every single day. I mean... Can you see that? I mean, how did this guy do that? So, you know, love or hate the guy, that ain't bad for a dude who was born, you know, in Lexington, Oklahoma, to a family of sharecroppers who started his professional career driving tank trucks. And you got to wonder, you mean, what did that guy know? I, I believe Harold knew one thing that sort of separated him from everybody else, that there's absolutely no difference between a big business and a small business. A big business is simply a small business that did the right things. And to either get big or to become your most profitable, capital efficient operation, uh, both are noble pursuits. It just depends on your goals. Um, you must apply you know, something that we've coined, which is the three pillars of profitable production in your oil and gas operation. Say that three times fast. Three pillars of profitable production. So number one, collaboration. Two, transparency. And three, systemization. So what do I mean by collaboration? Collaboration, excuse me. 
Um, collaboration, eliminating redundancies and workload for everybody involved. Pumper submits updates once, goes directly from their eyes and their ears in the field straight to a centralized system from which everybody in your team can work. That way, engineers now have data they can pull upon without having to call somebody else to re, you know, produce a report for them and without having to clean the data. They can just go straight to work. Admins and folks in accounting can now immediately reconcile their production statements without having to track down a miss and run ticket from a pumper. And management now has an immediate pulse on every single variable in their operations, all courtesy of the pumper. And all this is the root of collaboration. So we're not going to be doing the same job two, three, four times. Why? Well, because this increases your head count, the number of hands involved in your operations, and ultimately the number of uh, mouths you got to feed, which all end up, you know, adding up to increased overhead for the operator. So a simple, you know, analogy, if operator A manages 100 wells with a staff of four and operator B manages 100 wells with a staff of nine, you know, all things being equal, Oper a, operator A is going to win. I mean, his investors win, his employees win, and the company's going to carry on in nearly any environment. So second, what do we mean by transparency? What am I talking about? I'm talking about, is your pumper showing up at the well site each day like he should be? Can you verify this? Moreover, what's actually happening in the field? Has your tubing pressure been falling off over the last few days, but somebody forgot to report it? More importantly, when are we going to notice that issue? Three weeks later, when our purchaser statements show up? Is that acceptable in your operations? Are you being notified when a saltwater injection well pressure is creeping up before a blowout occurs? Are you getting your barrel or bucket test done on a schedule? Or are these activities going undone and falling by the wayside because there's always some other fire that crops up and has to be put out? Do you know how much oil, water, and gas each well is producing relative to the money it takes to operate it? So when we say transparency, this is precisely what we're talking about. Finally, systemization. One of my favorite books is The E-Myth Revisited by Michael E. Gerber. And this book should be required reading by every oil and gas operator. To be successful, your business needs to have some sort of continuous improvement. It needs to get better, and whether that means increasing efficiency or profit margin or decreasing waste, what have you. And to do that, you need to be able to perform consistently. And so what Gerber outlines in the E-Myth is this idea of the turnkey revolution, which is basically creating a foolproof, predictable business, uh, a systems-dependent business, not a people-dependent business, a business that can essentially work without you. So you know, to, to describe this, pretend that the business that you own or the wells that you own and all the activities uh, to support the production of each well is the prototype for a thousand more wells just like it. And so what Gerber prescribes is to think about your operations much like Ray Kroc did about McDonald's or Henry Ford must have thought about the Model T. So how could the components be constructed so that the resulting business system could be replicated over and over again with each well being overseen and properly maintained just as reliably as the thousands that preceded it? So what's true of every exceptional company is that they have a way of this is how we do it here. This is how we do it at Amazon. This is how we do it at Apple. This is how we do it at Google. And to turnkey your business, you must also have a way of doing things, which in oil and gas translates to, this is how we gauge. This is how we record our gauges. This is how we hold our purchasers and service companies accountable. This is how we submit our tickets. This is how we report our downtime. Essentially, the system is going to run the business and your people are simply going to run the system. And why is this system so important? Is because as quickly as your business grows, the chaos is going to grow even faster. And without systemization or the sort of engine that drives our workflow and our operations, our business is unmanageable, unpredictable, and man, it's unrewarding. And, and this is the key point. Why? Because until smartphones proliferated, excuse me, and the mobile workflows came to fruition as a result. True systemization had never been possible for the independent oil and gas operator. I mean, all workers and production assets were geographically spread out, as you know, and the technology to maintain the necessary transparency and collaboration, it simply wasn't available. So, you know, Excel, paper, text messages, and phone calls, they don't scare, uh, scale very well, and they ultimately, they break down. And the clunky, complicated, expensive legacy production software didn't really get it done either. So much like the, the franchisee 
you know, licenses the right to open up a restaurant and use this system. The oil and gas operator simply licenses the right to use the mobile workflow in his or her operation, then simply turns the key. So the mobile workflow does all the heavy lifting and the oil man, he loves it because all that's left for the oil man to do is learn how to manage the system. And that's what the turnkey revolution is all about. It's the backbone that enables you to build an operating company that works, uh, works predictably, effortlessly, and profitably each and every day, no matter the environment. So while we here at Greasebook have yet to take a small independent operator from one well to the size of $3 billion like Continental Resources, and the key word being yet, I mean, I, I do live in Oklahoma City and I see Harold walking his dog sometimes. Maybe I should stop and, and introduce myself. But either way, we have had the opportunity to equip hundreds of smaller operators the necessary mobile workflows with which to profitably grow their businesses. And while we've helped scale operating companies, you know, in excess of $60 million in revenue per year, you know, some of the most exciting opportunities for me personally are the independent operators who leverage mobile workflows at scale to 20 or 30 million bucks in revenue with no outside funding. Um, you know, one operator in particular who approached us several months ago had approximately 15 pumpers uh, tending to about 220 wells. And, and everything was stripper and oil and gas production. In my opinion, they were already running a pretty lean shop given the amount of leases they manage. I mean, it consisted of the owner who, who had already made a lot of money in the oil field, mind you, uh, a couple of supervisors and an in-house production engineer and an admin. And basically their pumpers, if they were submitting production reports at all, were submitting paper production reports once a month. And, and by the time everything was compiled and cleaned up and made available to the rest of the team, this particular operator was running 45 days behind. So the owner, Brett, he's about 60 years old. He told me what he wanted was something that was dead simple for his pumpers to use. He also had a lot of communication issues happening between different departments in his business. For example, uh, somebody in land might need something and couldn't get at it without their admin running a report for him. And he said he simply wanted a centralized you know, repository from which him and his engineer and anybody else in-house could get to the production info without having to call upon somebody for a report. So we rolled them out on the grease book, got their pumpers on the app, and completely changed the way they operated. We're talking bringing a 45-day lag time down to a real-time feedback loop. So long story short, about a year after they'd been rolled out, you know, out on the app, an opportunity to acquire some production from a larger operator came up in an area in which they already produced. And this specific acquisition would take them from 220 wells to more than 600. But the most exciting part about all this is to grow Brett's business and his bottom line, all he had to do was add two components, which were add pumpers and add wells. There was no admin or staff that had to be hired, no extra foremen or supervisors, and no engineers. Essentially, this team, they were able to scale their knowledge across all 600 wells, no matter if it was like a supervisor sitting in his truck or a production engineer at his desk a couple hundred miles away from the production because the mobile workflow, it provided them with the full collaboration, transparency, and systemization in their operations that they, that they required. So Brett told me, he goes, he goes, you know, Greg, growing a bigger operating company was like baking a cake. Instead of, instead, <laughs> instead of adding eggs and flour, we just added wells and pumpers. So anyway, as for Brett, man, if he wasn't already wealthy enough, which he was, uh, he got a hell of a lot richer. Um, and, and what we're trying to say is just with the right amount of collaboration and transparency with the field and the right system, this particular operator was able to triple their operations overnight. Well, not overnight, but very quickly, mind you, with little to no extra G&A costs just by adding wells and pumpers. That's the power of mobile workflow when it's combined with the right operator who's got the right idea. Um, so a few key points uh, just to leave you with this. Um, you know, many rules can be uh, reclassified simply as bad habits. Habits, as you know, can be changed. So consider what rules you and your operations might be bumping up against, you know, and what you can do to change that. Oftentimes, the only difference between a big business and a small business is that the big business did the right things. Um, remember the three keys to running our most profitable and capital efficient operation, this three pillars of profitable production, collaboration, no more redundant processes, all production updates stream uh, directly from the pumper, which the rest of the team is immediately informed, transparency, 
Is your pumper showing up at the well site when he's supposed to? Can you verify that? Are there any anomalies in production that we need to be made aware of? A drop in pressure, a drop in production, a well down. Um, systemization. The system runs the business. The people run the system. It's the predictable, repeatable engine that drives our workflow and our operations. Finally, you know, systemization will prepare to facilitate your growth in a balanced, healthy, proactive way. And remember that Excel paper text message require a lot of compilation, organization, and cleanup. Uh, and there's a lot of errors obviously involved and they, therefore they, they don't scale very well. So, um, thinking time. So first ask yourself, you know, how often does somebody on your team need to access, you know, information throughout the day or, or week? Um, is it readily available to them? Do they have to ever have to ask and call somebody or uh, go digging for information? You know, how much extra work is created around this lack of easily accessible information? And understand this doesn't just stop at just your production information and production reports um, in the office. We're also talking about like, for example, well history files and your folks in the field too. For example, uh, maybe you got a tubing job, a rod job, pump job, anything like that. And you get a call that a well is down and the service company is going to want to know things like, you know, how many joints of tubing? Where are the packers? Is there a packer? Is there a tubing anchor? And, and ask yourself, you know, I'm curious, you know, how do you get at this information? Do you got to go to the office, pull a file, go through the well completion report and pull this out? Or, you know, does your field supervisor simply have access to it on its phone in the field from which you can immediately share with the service crew on site? So, you know, if everybody on your team had access to this kind of information, you know, how much time would that save you? A few other questions, you know, what happens in your operation when, when a tubing pressure falls off at one of your wells, or maybe there's a sudden loss in pressure at one of your injectors. Is there a possibility that this could over, go overlooked? I mean, has it ever gone overlooked? Is, is it possible that could happen again? Um, if you had a system that not only constantly monitored the thousands of data points in your operations, but could also send you a text message or an email, if one of these instances occurred, you know, um, would that be valuable to your operations? Finally, um, if an opportunity to 3X your business tomorrow, you know, showed up on your doorstep, could you capitalize on it? Do you have the system in place to take advantage of such an opportunity? Um, you know, if not, is this perhaps a self-imposed limitation or perhaps a rule that needs to be broken? Just a few items for you to consider. So step two of creating your most profitable, capital efficient operation. Push work out from the office and into the field. More specifically, how to offload 50% of your in-house administrative work to the field without a lick of pushback from your pumpers or field crew in less than an afternoon. So when we were just getting started with Greasebook, I was in a fortunate position to be invited out to the field by several operators I'd met while working at the family business. And I got to visit a bunch of different operations across Oklahoma, Texas, and Kansas. And it was really an opportunity to get out of the back office and into the field. And it was my first exposure to what pumping and operating wells was really like. So one of my trips took me to Lincoln County, Oklahoma, just outside of a town known as Kearney. And I remember sitting down with the head foreman there. And he told me two things, a couple of things which I'll never forget. The first thing he told me is he said, he goes, Greg, there's a reason why we do things the way we do them. A lot of smart people came before you, and there's a reason your app ain't never going to work. The second thing he told me, he goes, Greg, wells are just like women. As soon as you think you got one of them figured out, that's when they'll trip you. So obviously, I had to take what this old guy said with a grain of salt. But to this day, him saying, Greg, there's a reason your app ain't never going to work still rings very clearly in my mind. And to an extent, you know, this guy was right. I mean, the idea of field data collection, it's always been a good one. The only problem was the technology simply wasn't available yet. You know, many of the larger software players like Schlumberger, IHS P2, you know, they tended to overcomplicate their software to the dismay of the pumper. And I'd even seen some oil and gas associations come out with some Palm Pilot stuff too. And up until this time, you know, the tendency was to force down upon the pumpers and field crew production software that made things very difficult. And so while everybody's, you know, intentions were good, obviously, it was a, it was a wonderful example of how technology worked against the very people it was trying to help. So in defense of this older gentleman that I was speaking with, you know, from his perspective in the field, the pumper's responsibility to manage production assets remained the same, yet they were now forced to work with production reporting tools that simply added frustration and time to their workload. 
But, you know, when the iPhone came out, <clears throat> we knew this time it was different. And, and why? Well, because mobile wasn't forced from the top down. It was driven from the bottom up. And, and that said, you know, our intent was never to replace or discredit the old way of doing things, but rather take the best from the old way and simply complement or mesh it with the new. So given my experiences, you know, if a mobile workflow was ever going to work, we knew it had to be simple, so simple that any pumper, and I mean any pumper, no matter how old or tech resistant, could pick up and run with the app in six or eight minutes. That was our goal. Um, this is why mobile is so important <clears throat> because it can be downloaded to any device and rolled out in less than 30 seconds. So again, <clears throat> you know, on my phone here, um, I'll just go to the app store. Step one, <clears throat> if I can find the app store and all my, all my apps here, app store. Very good. Uh, simply search Greasebook. Step two, got Greasebook pulled up and just hit download. There we go. So, you know, now on my phone, in a matter of 12 or 15 seconds on the fly, we've got every gauge, every comment, every well test, you know, accessible on my phone from which anybody in the business who needs access to it can have it. And now just as able, you know, just as easily as we're able to access and review our production info, we're able to add and submit production to it as well. And the cool thing is once we start receiving your pumpers production updates, you know, um, via their mobile app, this mobile workflow, and we get it in the cloud, you know, not only are we able to display your production info uh, and graph format and sift through it to extract and alert you to any, any issues in the field, uh, but now we're able to start automating things like all your state reports and your EPA reports and your well injection and your disposal reports and your investor reports and your manager reports. Um, all that's automated. So, you know, when you join together a simple mobile workflow with a little bit of insight into the challenges of the pumper in the field, you know, the idea is you make it a win-win for both the operator and the pumper. And that, you know, is precisely how you're able to offload 50% of your in-house admin work to the field without a lick of pushback from your pumpers or field crew in less than an afternoon, or in case of the grease book, in less than about 12 seconds. So just a few key points you want to walk you through. I mean, mobile, it's driven from the bottom up, you know, from the field into the office. And this kind of ties back into the three pillars of profitable production that we were talking about collaboration. Um, everybody's, you know, working, we're not redoing processes. Um, you know, everybody's on the, on the same page. It's a win-win for your pumpers and for you. Um, you know, we, 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 we do a process one time, not two, three, four times. So that's collaboration. You know, two, mobile enables your entire team to access data at any time of day, no matter where they're at. And that's that full transparency with the field, that second pillar of profitable production. You know, finally, third, mobile makes it a snap for anybody, any age on your team to get started immediately. And that's that systemization. And remember, the idea is that, uh, you know, the people run the system and the system runs the business. And if anybody can just download this app, you know, um, to their phone, you know, the turnkey process is going to take care of the rest, which enables you to do what you do best, which is produce oil and gas, not be sort of trapped down in all the minutia. <clears throat> so, uh, action item, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, make a quick poll of your pumpers just to see who's got a smartphone. And I think you're going to be really surprised. Um, most pumpers, you know, even the guys that are in their seventies that are still pumping wells, they have a smartphone now. And why is that? Well, because they want to see and interact with their grandkids. So if they don't have a smartphone, um, you know, we source, uh, iPads for your, for your pump staff. And that's not a problem. But we'll, we'll FedEx it straight to their doorstep. We'll even train them for you. Uh, we do run on a desktop and a laptop, but that said, I think if you just call your pumpers, uh, call around, you'll be really surprised at how many guys are using these tools. So how to limit your exposure to fluctuations in the price of oil in less than 48 hours without any expensive hedging contracts by using the principles of a long forgotten Italian economist. So, you know, a lot of operators, they come to me and they tell me they want to grow and they want to be more profitable. But, you know, when they're presented with a new way of doing things that can help them achieve these goals, they're either short on time or sometimes they want to wait until prices recover. But, you know, given how simple mobile workflows are for people of all ages, you know, to me, this seems like saying, oh, you know, I don't have time to be more profitable right now. Or, you know, once the price of oil goes up, then we'll get more capital efficient. I mean, it's kind of silly, but it's true. 
And all this reminds me of an interesting story of an Italian economist by the name of Vilfredo Pareto. And, and born in the late 19th century, Pareto was an engineer by training, but also a controversial economist. And the cool part is Pareto began his career overseeing coal mines before eventually being named chair of political economy at one of the universities uh, in Switzerland, one of the leading universities there. And his most recognized work explored a then unknown law of income distribution. So you may have heard about it as today it's known as Pareto's law or the 80-20 principle. So the 80-20 rule is powerful because it's a law of nature, kind of like the golden ratio or the butterfly effect or uh, chaos theory. In fact, it's driven by the same underlying principles. So basically, Pareto's law can be summarized as 20% of the work we put in creates 80% of our results. And so how in the world does this apply to the oil field? Well, we could say with reasonable amount of confidence that 20% of your wells make up 80% of your company's production. If you got a few horizontals, just rework some wells. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. 20% uh, of your haulers make up 80% of your skimmed oil. Well, I trust most of my service companies, but there's one hauler we got an eye on. Eh, probably right. 20% uh, of your wells make up 80% of your engineer's work, those trouble wells. Or even, my favorite, 20% of your pumpers make up 80% of your admin headaches. So in fact, we could probably come up with an exhaustive supply of list, you know, a list to, to apply this principle to the oil field. And many times, you know, you'll encounter this principle as being skewed even more severely. 90-10, 95-5, or even 99-1 isn't unheard of. So as an operator, we must make a choice. We can continue to shovel more coal in our operations, and I'm talking about more fires, more email, more phone calls, more miscommunication, more needless expenditures, or we can begin the dissection of our operational workflow through the lens of this Italian economist. And with the volatility in the oil business today, doing more with less is becoming mandatory. That's why it's so important to focus on the 20% of the activities that are gonna bring us 80% of the results. That's the name of the game. So step three of our thesis here to creating a most profitable, capital efficient operation is to receive outside results from our oil and gas operations. We must dissect our operational workflow through the lens of Pareto. In fact, the right mobile workflow can help automate many of the mundane and repeatable processes that don't require a lot of thought, all this brain dead stuff. And, you know, by removing such tasks, this frees you and your team up to focus on activities or that 20% that will actually affect the bottom line. So how long does it take to get started with a typical mobile workflow? Well, you know, I can't speak for other software systems, but with Greasebook, all that's required is to either scan your paper gauge sheets or share with us an Excel file. Uh, we'll share a URL or web, uh, website with you. You simply drag and drop those, those, those scans or that Excel file and poof, I mean, you're done. We turnkey your entire setup. I mean, uh, it generally takes you about 20 seconds, assuming you've got everything compiled in a file somewhere, but I don't know who doesn't have time for that. So what's more is that mobile workflows enable you as an operator to approach the minimum organizational size you need to achieve your goals. And whether that's scaling up your business or simply reducing your overhead, again, both noble pursuits, just every operator is different. So anyways, what we're talking about is four minutes worth of work, which is gonna pay out in weeks of human life each year in per per perpetuity that won't go wasted in your operations. So, you know, with the single drag and drop of a file, you'll be able to one, reduce the amount of bodies we pay to redo work that's already been done. Again, you know, first pillar of profitable production, um, collaboration. Two, we would eliminate, 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 sounds like a mineral, eliminate oversight in the oil field, which prevents waste, transparency. And finally, you know, we'll have all hands on deck scrutinizing things like tubing pressures, pump times, you know, and how they are affecting our production, which is, you know, systemization, because the systemization is the sort of that engine pushing that updates to our, to our offices, and it's collaboration. We're, we're getting our pumpers to engage, our pumpers to take responsibility. Uh, we're enabling us to, uh, you know, hold our pumpers and our field crew accountable, asking them the most, you know, the difficult questions because they have access to all that historical information right there on their phone. So, <clears throat> you know, with this particular mobile workflow here, we've taken operators from 10 wells to 100 and from 100 wells to 1,000. 
and not by adding more GNA, but by simply adding more wells and more pumpers. I mean, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the 80-20 principle at its finest. That is real leverage in your operations, all which enables your company to run more efficiently or grow exponentially, again, depending on your goals. So we're talking less mistakes in the field, less downtime, lower headcount, better control and financial oversight of your wells. So aside from creating a great company and simply enjoying what it is that you do, I mean, creating your most profitable operation is what oil and gas production is all about. You know, in fact, for the time invested and number of dollars spent, I'm not aware of any other activity that can get you the kind of immediate payback a mobile workflow can. So one story to close this point out, it's a story about a very strong woodcutter. So the pay was really good. And so were the working conditions. And for those reasons, the woodcutter was determined to do his best. So his boss gave him an ax and he showed him the area which he would work. And the first day, the woodcutter felled 18 trees. And congratulations, the boss said. Hey, man, you're one of the best I've seen. Motivated by the boss's words, the woodcutter tried harder the next day, but he could only bring down 15 trees. The third day, try as he might, he only managed 10. Day after day, he finished with fewer trees. And the woodcutter, he was really down on himself and his work. And he's thinking to himself, he's like, man, I must be losing my strength. So he went to the boss and he apologized for his lack of results. And what the boss did is the boss simply took him aside and he asked the woodcutter, hey, so when was the last time you sharpened your axe? Sharpen, the woodcutter replied. I have no time to sharpen my axe. I'm too busy cutting trees. So just like the woodcutter finishes every day with fewer trees, the independent operator finishes each year with fewer recoverable barrels. The idea is to take a step back from our operations and consider new ways of doing things. And if given the chance to sharpen the saw that is our operations, potentially through a mobile workflow and increase our profit and protect our employees and our business in the process, would we find time to do that? Well, I hope so. So again, in summation, <clears throat> this is precisely how by combining mobile workflows together with the principles of a forgotten Italian economist, this is how you limit your exposure to fluctuations in the price of oil in less than 48 hours, or in the case of Greasebook, less than four minutes without any expensive hedging contracts. So a few key points to go over. 80% of the results are generated by 20% of the effort. And remember, this often skews to 90-10, 95-5, and 99-1 is not unheard of either. So number two, as opposed to simply working harder or longer hours or hiring more people in our operations, let's take time to sharpen the saw. Um, next slide is thinking time. So just a few things to consider. You know, as opposed to spending your day as a juggling act between field operations, back office operations, the evaluation, uh, evaluation of prospects and the like, what are the activities in your business or that 20% that are contributing to the majority or 80% of the results? Two, you know, ask yourself, what could you eliminate, automate, or potentially delegate which would enable you to double down on these business, uh, business critical activities or that 20%. So a quick Q and A, you know, <clears throat> you know, how big do we have to be or how many wells do we need to operate to make these mobile workflows work for us? And the cool thing is, you know, you don't need 200, 500 or a thousand wells for this mobile stuff to work for you. It works for operators of all sizes. And in fact, you know, Smaller operators many times have just as much to gain, if not more, than the largest of operators. Another question is, get, hey, well, you guys know how to read my gauge sheets. And, um, you know, the majority of folks that work here at Greasebook have owned or operated wells. We have petroleum engineers on staff and geologists. And that said, we've seen thousands of different styles of gauge sheets. So assuming it contains your basic info, well names, tank sizes, and the like, uh, we'll be good to go. So um, sort of a basic summary of what we've been talking about um, is, you know, what's required to run your most profitable, capital efficient operation? It's quite simple, really. First, we must focus on our existing production. And once we systemize the heck out of our existing production, we'll be free to focus on the shinier object, which is that new well, because we'll know our operations are 100% optimized. Second, using people uh, to leverage a good process is going to multiply your, your output. However, you know, using people as a way to fix a poor process 
is only going to multiply your problems. Third, find the bad habits in your operations, which are disguised as rules, and simply break them. Fourth, three pillars of profitable production. First, collaborate with your pumpers and field crew. Push work out from the office and into the field to reduce your GNA. Second pillar, gain transparency with your operations and watch your business like a hawk. Does a load need hauling? Is there a hole in the tubing? Did a pumper show up on site today? All this to avoid costly oversights and ultimately help us to lower our LOE. Third, leverage dead, simple, and I mean simple systems in your operations in which anyone can quickly be brought up to speed, which bring predictable profits to your business. Finally, you must identify the 20% of the activities in your operations that will deliver 80% of the results. If you don't prioritize, everything's going to seem urgent and important. But if you define the single most important task for each day, almost nothing seems urgent or important. So oftentimes I found it's just a matter of letting little bad things happen to get the big important things done. And the answer to overwhelm is not spending more plates or doing more. It's defining the few things that can really fundamentally change your business and your life. So all these things, when taken together, is precisely how we achieve unprecedented levels of cash flow and capital efficiency in our oil and gas operations in less than an afternoon using nothing more than simple mobile workflows, all without a lick of pushback from your pumpers or your field crew. So again, <clears throat> there are a few ways of applying workflows to your business. Option one is you can go the route of paper and Excel, which we like to call the hard way. Um, what happens with this is you'll never have your data when you need it. And <clears throat> if you do it yourself, and you shouldn't, because you're ultimately going to fall behind due to more pressing matters, you're going to have to pay somebody else just to keep up with it. There's going to be errors, mistakes, missing data, and you're not going to have the collaboration, transparency, and systemization required to run your most profitable operation. All this is going to lead you to wonder what the heck is really going on out in the field. You'll also be stuck focusing on things like hardline management of your pumpers, you know, call them to get their data in because they haven't got their data in on time, and you're not going to be focused on the 80-20, all of which will ultimately hamper your growth and take up more of your bandwidth. You also have a second option, <clears throat> which is we like to call the hard, complicated, expensive way. So basically, you can go the route of legacy production software, the P2 Even, the Schlumberger Avocet, the IHS Field Direct, all which are well-known companies, all which validate the idea of electronically capturing data from the field. And so with this decision, you'll have replaced paper and Excel workflows, and you're going to have a system, so to speak, <clears throat> excuse me, but now you'll also have all the complexity, the upkeep, and all the expense that goes along with this kind of legacy software. Also, we've now seen some other, you know, it's interesting, oil and gas accounting software companies enter the mobile workflow space. Let me be very clear in stating that mobile, or excuse me, most of these uh, oil and gas accounting companies, man, they're very good at what they do at their core. You know, the logic, the accounting principles, the application of these principles to the oil field. And remember, I grew up in the oil and gas accounting software space. <clears throat> so upon first blush, you'd think, great. You know, now my field data is going to seamlessly sync with all my accounting. But unfortunately, it never really works out that way. Why not? Well, several reasons, but I'll give you two of them. First, <clears throat> because these systems are still legacy software systems at their core. And because they have to work around all this old code and frameworks that were originally intended for a different process. So the app never achieves the level of simplicity required in the back office to successfully manage the operation. So, you know, they might have a simple app in the field, but the office component is still extremely complex and nowhere as simple as it needs to be. The second reason, and perhaps the most you know, important one, is because you know, the oil and gas accounting software companies focused, and in all fairness, the lion's share of their profits is driven by the accounting side of the business. And that said, they never get around to developing the production side or the production tool as completely as it needs to be developed. Simply ask them, you know, how do you handle pulled bottoms? How do you handle dual product tanks, split loads? What you're going to get is you're going to get blank stares. So in summary, you know, there's an old saying that goes, when you try to do everything and you try to please everyone, you end up pleasing no one. Um, and, you know, the folks in production, 
get left holding the bag. And remember, by the time most operators figure this out, hold on tight, buddy. Put the lap bars down, clank, 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 clank. <laughs> Throw your hands up. You're on the legacy software roller coaster. So I, I had to have some fun here. So anyway, all kidding aside, you know, you do have a third option. You can go with a simple mobile workflow, which we like to call the easy way. Um, not only will you have a cost-effective system through which you can scale your operations without adding a bunch of GNA, once your field crew figures out that it's delivered in the form of a simple mobile app, excuse me, you won't receive a lick, a pushback from anybody. So we're talking on time, accurate data on demand. We're talking a centralized place from which everybody can work. You're going to have the three pillars of profitable, uh, the three pillars of profitable production. Wow. On lock, full collaboration, transparency, and systemization of your operations. Automated and working around the clock in your operations, even while you sleep. Like one East Texas oil man eloquently put it, if your pumpers can't figure out how to run the grease book, well, I'd say you got the wrong group of pumpers. So most operators tell us this is a no-brainer. So again, this solution is for small and mid-sized operators who are not only trying to streamline, but also future-proof their operations, and who are also looking for the simplest, most lightweight, and cost-effective way of going about it. So maybe you're tired of all the late and incorrect data from your pumpers. Maybe you've just ventured out on your own, and you've seen all the legacy software at the company where you got your start, and you told yourself, when I run my own company one day, I'm going to do things differently. So either way, if you're running on paper and Excel and are trying to streamline your operations or you're trying to transition from a legacy system to something more cost effective and easy to maintain, this is for you. So in fact, let's see what one of our operators had to say about just such an occurrence. Here's Matt Ciardiello, the CEO of Poplar Resources, which owns and operates the working interest of a geological structure known as the Poplar Dome outside Poplar, Montana. So Matt approached us with quite a complex challenge. From a production and revenue accounting standpoint, Poplar's oil field is one of the most complex fields out there that you're gonna find. So let's see what Matt had to say. I think Greasebook stands out to me as a software in this industry uh, because of its simplicity. Uh, there are other solutions that do what Greasebook does or purport to do what Greasebook does, but the ones that I looked into were quite complicated. Uh, they were tied into accounting softwares uh, that we didn't use and therefore made them probably more uh, complicated than they needed to be for our purposes. Greasebook is so simple, it is designed around uh, the pumper out in the field who has to record the information and I think that's probably its strongest point. It's easy to use for the pumpers and it's easy to use then for the people back in the office and, and because of its ease of use it, it's, it's uh, relatively foolproof in, in accomplishing what it attempts to do which is recording gauge readings and other field data and getting them back to the office efficiently. Prior to Greasebook, it was quite a nightmare for us every month to close out our production accounting and our revenue accounting. It was a process that was driven in Excel, um, but it was just very tedious. Uh, the most tedious, obviously, is collecting the data on a daily basis, and Greasebook has greatly streamlined that. It's streamlined the, um, the accounting for um, field tickets or sales tickets um, when, when oil is sold. Uh, so before Greasebook, uh, it, it, quite a quite a difficult time for us um, closing out the monthly uh, the monthly production. It was a, the day of, that day of the month I really did not look forward to. Um, with Grease Spoke, we've we probably saved six eight hours at least uh, on our monthly close, uh, and it's quite a streamlined process now. I've been a user of three different production reporting softwares and been a part of the implementation team for two different softwares, including Greasebook. What makes Greasebook stand out is the ease of implementation and the ease of use. Uh, you can roll out a full field on a Greasebook really within a week or two or less if your field's pretty small. And the implementation on the field side is really easy. We were able to transition some employees that never really use technology, including cell phones and computers in any real capacity. And get them using Greasebook and enjoying it within a couple days. So before we started working with Greasebook, we were based 100% um, on Excel. So 
the pumpers would either use their own computer and put the tank gauges in an Excel program uh, that I created or that they created, they already had one. And at the end of the month, they would email or mail those in. Uh, some of them just did hand gauges. And then I would, by hand, put the, ga the tank gauges and water meter and water gauges um, into my Excel sheet. So in the past, I've worked with larger companies, um, some of the majors, and the software that they had was really robust. It was way out of my price range. So I'm a small company, independent exploration production company, and I just don't have the budget to uh, buy any kind of program like that, and it wouldn't make sense. It's too, too involved. Um, it, it requires a, a staff to help run it. And I don't have I don't have the, the capacity to help run uh, the program. Um, and Greasebook is really made to run on an iPhone or Android or an iPad, and that works. We don't have to buy any more uh, hardware. We don't have to go out and buy any kind of special uh, you know one of those laptops that can be used out in the field. You know we can use what we've already had. People know how to work their phones. Um, they know how to take pictures with it, and so there was very little training required you know, once we got started. So several months ago, we were presented with uh, an interesting report by IHS Market that stated the average onshore downtime experience per well is 2.9 days a month, and I'd love your feedback on this number. That said, it got us curious. And we wanted to know whether our Greasebook users were experiencing lower downtimes than the national average. And given the hundreds of operators we already have on the app, we have the luxury of quite a bit of production data. So what we decided to do was to cross-reference the findings of the IHS market report with the 21,200 wells under manage on the Greasebook platform. And what we found got us really excited. What we found is that the average downtime for operators using the Greasebook app is 1.8 days a month a full 1.1 day reduction over the national average. So that said, Greasebook operators on average are able to achieve a 38% reduction in unplanned downtime when compared against the industry at large. So look, I'm aware there are lies, damn lies, and there's statistics that you tell me. But we have cross-checked these findings with several clients on the app, so let's see what they had to say about it. So one of the problems we were trying to solve with Greasebook was getting the time from when a well has a problem in production to when I know about it um, down to you know that day. So a lot sometimes what would happen a pumper wouldn't really catch that um, we were losing some production, but. Uh, you know, until the end of the month when I got the run tickets, then I would be able to see that and, um, you, know, you know, then I would be able to take action on that. But with getting the production daily, I can see what we're making daily and we're drilling new wells right now. And it's really important to see what these new wells are doing every day, what the pressures are doing. Um, and my investors are interested in seeing what the wells are doing every day. I'm, and here recently, we had a well go down with a hole in tubing. Um, and it was on a lease that doesn't make a whole lot. That pumper, um, you know, he was one of the guys that would send it in by hand. Um, but with the app, I was able to see, you know, he sent a message or comment on the app. And I said, hey, we have a well down with a possible hole in tubing. And I was able to see it that day, where normally, you know, it would be a few weeks, you know, before I would really see something like that because, you know, he, we just didn't communicate a whole lot. You know, he, he, he wouldn't call sometimes. And so, you know, that's been really big for me. I take long uh, for us to see the benefit. It was about, I'm going to say 10 or 12 days into using it. Uh, we noticed a little drop off in production and I, you know, messaged one of our, our other partners who's more in the field um, said, you know, what's going on here? And he said, I noticed it too. Um, I'm going to look out there tomorrow and, um, and, you know, zipped it up, got it taken care of and, you know, it was done in a day or two. Whereas, 
you know, we were, we were 10 or 12 days in the month. So we were probably looking at another two, two and a half weeks of, of there being this issue that didn't get resolved more than likely. Um, so yeah, it, it, it paid for itself really fast for us, which was, which was nice just to see, you know, that instant gratification. So if you're currently doing things by paper or Excel, here's what's going to happen when you work with the grease book. First, you're going to have accurate reporting from all your pumpers. So no longer are you or somebody on your staff going to have to uh, go in and clean this information up. It's all quality controlled right on the app in the field. We don't even let your pumper submit bad data. So that's what first. Second, Timely reporting. No longer are you always going to be stuck calling your pumpers to, quote, get their data in. It's, it's on time. It's real time. It's on demand. Um, you're going to keep better track of your downtime. So not only making sure that your pumpers notify you of it in the first place, but again, with the, the systems constantly uh, sifting through all your production information. And if you'd like, um, it'll send you a text message or an email or a summer report when a well's down. So even if your pumper knows a well's down but forgot to notify you or something's falling through the cracks, you're still going to be alerted to it either way. Um, next, we're also going to do automatic run ticket reconciliation for you. So there are no more missing run tickets at the end of the month, which you have to track down and you'll be rest assured. You're always getting paid your due. So, um, no more missing loads doesn't happen very often, but it, it does happen every once in a while. So no more missing loads, uh, and no more skimmed oil. Um, what else we got for you here? Um, you're also uh, going to be able to keep better track of your service companies. So we're talking, you know, uh, your water hauled, your oil, uh, hot oil jobs, uh, vacuum truck operators. Um, you know, this doesn't happen very often, but occasionally operators have a hunch, you know, they're coming up short on their production each month. So if that's, if that's the case for you, you're going to have full transparency of your oil stock in the field, which is essentially your cash till. No more worrying about that. It's all accounted for. Um, you're also going to have perfect records of any maintenance performed at the well site, and you're going to have a better indication of when to schedule out routine maintenance. Um, we're also going to give you a place for well history files and records and better documentation from which everybody on your team is going to be able to reference, you know, at any time, at any place, on any device. Should save you just a ton of time. Um, you're also going to have the ability to feed your production data into other tools. So the Greasebook plays really nice with uh, all sorts of other softwares and systems. So Pumper enters information through his mobile app. Uh, it's synced to our cloud, and once we get it in the cloud, we can push it out to things like, um, you know, PhD Win or Power Tools, or maybe you've got an accounting software you'd like us to sync up to, or perhaps like you're a Spotfire user or a Microsoft BI, or you might even have an access database on site. Again, the, we have an open back end, and, and, and the Greasebook can talk to all these systems automatically, so we can automate all that for you, that entire, entire workflow. Um, so you're also going to have accurate well testing and allocations. We have an allocation engine, the downtime tracker, the well testing, and we're going to allocate all that stuff for you and, um, show you which wells, how much they're producing. And obviously show your pumpers or your well tester, uh, you know, the last several tests in the field when, when they're testing a well. So they have a referenceable data point with which to work to see how a, a well has performed since its last test. Um, you're also going to be able to confirm, you know, with the grease book that, uh, that your pumpers are showing up to the lease when they're supposed to, and that they're simply holding up their end of the bargain. So it's like that old Ronald Reagan phrase, trust, but verify. So we trust our pumpers, but we're just going to simply verify everybody that we, that we work with. And now we have the tools to do so. Um, and of course you're going to have all your production reports on demand and formatted in Excel. A lot of people are really comfortable with Excel. They like Excel and we can push out everything to Excel if that's what you want to. So not only that, but you're going to feel empowered, confident, and motivated because you'll be, you'll know you'll be running your most profitable operation with the highest amount of capital efficiency, you know, or, you know, in the case of those of you who are switching over from a legacy system, just know that on, not only will we do away with all that complexity, but we're also going to import all your historical data at no additional cost. So that way you can move forward without fear of losing any production data that you might have already had stored in your other system. So again, no more overkill, no more complications, no more nickel and diming, no more high price solutions, just a simple cost effective app, the right tool for the right job. Uh, so, you know, today we've got several thousand pumpers utilizing the app the country over. You know, many of which are 75 years old and still pumping. And, and that said, I can tell you how simple the app is until I'm blue in the face. But I think it's better if you hear it straight from both our clients and our pumpers in the field. I expected Greasebook to be 
maybe a little harder to use than it actually is. It's very user friendly and it's been very easy to work with. Book is so simple. It is designed around uh, the pumper out in the field who has to record the information, and I think that's probably its strongest point. It's easy to use for the pumpers, and it's easy to use then for the people back in the office. And and because of its ease of use, it, it's it's uh, relatively foolproof in in accomplishing what it attempts to do, which is recording gauge readings and other field data and getting them back to the office efficiently. It's so simple. It's so easy for the field staff to use that that really I. I I can't see why anyone wouldn't want to give it a try, and I would have no problem recommending it. What exceeded my expectations the most was the ease of use on the field side. Um, I've used a handful of different programs that kind of had varying levels of use and how easy they are to implement with people that aren't used to using technology, and I was really surprised at how easy I could roll it out, um, really with no issue, and the learning curve was really fast, and pretty quickly they were really preferring it to the old way they used to do things. I would tell them it's a lot easier than they think uh, for the level of product that you get. It's really easy to set up and implement in the beginning. It's easy to roll out to field employees. Uh, it's very easy on the office side to analyze production data and export the reports that you need kind of weekly or monthly or however you see fit. All my pumpers are in their 50s or 60s and they're a little hesitant to start at first using it. But once they got started and went through it, they got really used to it and they liked the fact that um, doesn't create any more work at the end of the month for them. It's, it's super easy for me. Um, you know, I mainly use it just to uh, check our production, make sure the wells are going and make sure our pumpers are doing our job. But I've been talking with our pumpers just this week. A couple of them have had it for a while. Um, one or two of them, I think this is their first time using it. And, you know, they're just, they're, they're kind of blown away with, with how easy it is. And, you know, very hesitant at, to, you know, to begin with, I'm not good with technology. I'm not good at, uh, you know, with phones and everything. And, you know, just told them it's not hard. It's, it's a couple buttons really. And, uh, we're only what a couple weeks in maybe. And they're, uh, they can't believe they've been, writing it down on paper this long, so. So simplicity in our operations and simplicity in our supporting rules. You know, this helps enable us, us to, to cut through all the noise. So it helps us to manage contingent labor risk directly and be more agile in developing a flexible liquid workforce. And why is this important? Well, with the cyclical nature of oil and gas, you're not always stuck retraining. You know, people are able to get up to speed on this mobile stuff really, really quick. So um, two, we're gonna focus on the gear we already got. Most all pumpers, again, even the guys that are, you know, 75 and still pumping, they do have a smartphone. Remember, they, they want to interact with their grandkids and they want to do FaceTime or video. So um, anyways, they know if they don't have a smartphone, they'd be missing out. And I think you'd be impressed with how many of these guys have these kind of devices now. So, so anyway, so you're saying to yourself, okay, my pumpers can use it. And it's simple for me and my folks in the field. But Greg, you know, I'm just a small independent operator. We operate maybe some higher flow wells with a few of them, but a lot of my wells are simply low production stripper wells. How much is this thing gonna cost me? You know, well, if you wanted to get this job done before using one of the legacy production software systems, it would cost you at least five, possibly even six figures to get started. And on top of that, you're gonna be charged a per well setup fee, you know, $180 in uh, an hour in training fees with at least a full day of training in house and a full day of training your pumpers in the field. You're going to be saddled with annual help desk support contracts, which are several thousand dollars a year, you know, minimum term agreement of anywhere from one to three years. They're going to lock you in on that legacy software roller coaster. And not to mention, you know, all the complexity and cruft. But with Greasebook, you know, we really set out to change all that. So not only are we going to give you a better solution, we're going to give you a better deal too. So first of all, there are no setup fees. Greasebook takes this completely off your plate, turnkeys your entire setups. That's your tank and your tank straps and your wells and your pumpers and everything for you. We don't charge to do this. It's all part of the, the, the monthly fee. Um, no training fees. So, you know, ramp up time for your pumper takes about eight to 10 minutes. Um, same goes for the office side. And again, what I would ask a lot of these other, you know, uh, production software companies is if you need to charge a bunch of money to train for your software, you know, why didn't you just consider building a simpler app? And that's what we did here at Greasebook. We wanted to keep it really simple for you guys. Um, 
which pays dividends in, in several different ways. Uh, next, free help desk calls. You got a question? Great. We got a free 24-7 help desk line and 8 to 5 in-app chat. And the coolest thing about these, these help support and the chat is that they're supported and you're backed by petroleum engineers and geologists. So again, these are the people that, that you want you know, to be speaking with. They get your business. They understand what you do. A lot of them operate their own wells. And um, you know, they, they get the business and they love the business. And um, you know, this is something that's really important for us. So you're going to have that help when you need it. And it's going to be really good help. Um, Four, no contracts. You know, we think more you know, folks in the oil field should stand behind their surface and operate like this. So everything we do here at Greasebook is month to month. We're not going to lock you into anything. And that really keeps, you know, um, things sort of aligned in the operator's favor. So it keeps us on our toes and performing for you and working for you. And if we ever don't do what we say we're going to do or hold up our end of the bargain, you're not locked into a contract. And I think that's really important. So finally, no charge for extra users. Like if you have ad admins or engineers or working interest owners or supervisors you want to bring in, uh, we don't charge for that. So, you know, basically... With Greasebook, you know, you're going to be able to achieve the collaboration, transparency, and systemization required in your operations to reach maximum profit and extreme capital efficiency. We're talking five times better results with a third the effort at a tenth of the cost of the, some of these production software solutions. So, you know, that said, you know, book a call so that we can not only learn, you know, more about your goals for your operations and how you think the grease book will help with these goals, but also so we can get you a price. You know, each operator is different and uh, pricing is very straightforward, but we do need to talk to you a little bit before we, before we give you a price. So the call shouldn't take more than 12 to 15 minutes, you know, and um, I really look forward to speaking with you and answering any questions you might have. So one thing to keep in mind, you know, due to the amount of demand we're receiving from the operator community, we are limiting the number of clients we onboard to three operators a week or 12 a month. And understand this isn't some sort of fake scarcity ploy. This is simply what's required to meet the market demand for the app. Um, Greasebook has a 98% success rate with the operators that we onboard to the app, and we want to keep it this way. So, you know, we understand the oil patch is a really small world, and so by limiting the number of operators we onboard each month, it simply enables us to deliver the type of experience that you'd expect so we can keep that word of mouth rolling in. Uh, we want you to tell your friends. We want to make you happy first, but uh, once you are, and we know you will be, we'd like for you to tell your other operators. So um, fair and balanced. Uh, so please keep in mind, we generally maintain about a two to three week wait list. Um, one other thing is I almost forgot, but since you stayed until the end, we're going to do something extremely special for you. So I know it was a long video today, but it's important you understand, you know, what our story is and where we came from, what it is we set out to do, and above all, why mobile is so important to your operations. That said, for a limited time, we're going to offer a free month of Greasebook when you pay for a month. So simply mention this on our call and we'll give you a free month of the app when you pay for one. So it's a pretty sweet deal, but keep it between us as a token of our gratitude for sharing your attention and time with us today. Um, you earned it and, and you know, both your time and attention are very valuable to us. Mm. One other thing I'd like to mention is to make sure you are aware of is our 60 day money back guarantee trial. So basically when you pay for your first month of the grease book, you'll have 60 days to trial the app. You're going to know whether you like this app in about four or five days, but if for any reason our app doesn't work for you or doesn't work for your operations, you let us know within 60 days for a complete refund with no questions asked. I'm not aware of anybody else in the industry today doing something similar. And again, uh, with our 98% uh, percent success rate with the operators we have on the app, I, I think that's pretty cool. And I think that's really saying something. So so if I had a business associate that was thinking about Greasebook, um, I would kind of tell them my story. Uh, whenever Greasebook first came out, I saw them come out, um, I don't know, on some kind of advertisement, maybe Facebook or something. And I feel like that was in 2014, 2015. And, you know, I talked with uh, Greg, the owner, back then, and really... Uh, was, you know, asked him a lot of questions about it and kind of followed the progress. I didn't want to jump in with the company um, and then them not be around in a few years. And so I watched them for a long time. And, you know, you have to come to a point where you're just going to try it out. And Greasebook has a uh, money back return policy. 
So I would just recommend to try it. And you can look at it, you can study it, you can talk about it, but with a money back guarantee, you can do it like I did. And I just did it myself. I didn't tell my pumpers about it. I, I decided I'm gonna get everything I need. I'm gonna act like the pumper. And for about a month I did that. And, you know, I loved it. I knew I would love it, but, you know, I thought, you know, yeah, I think this is going to work for me. And, um, you know, if you really just try it out, there's really not any downsides that I've seen. Um, you know, if you don't like it, you have a money back return guarantee. So, you know, there's really no risk to the operator. So finally, so in summary, let's summarize this. So again, money back guarantee, 60 day trial, no setup fees, no training fees, free help desk calls, no contracts, no charge for admins or engineers or supervisors, and also no charge for importing any historical data that you have. You get it in Excel format, we'll import it for you at no charge. So again, all you got to do is book a call. I think we've got a button below this video. It says either get a prize or book a call, something like that. But again, remember, we only onboard 12 operators a month and spots are on a first come, first serve basis. So what you do is you simply pay a fully refundable invoice for your first month's service. We'll get some basic info from you and walk you through every step of the way. So you have nothing to lose. Um, so anyways, I don't know what else you need. Um, I mean, this, this mobile app stuff, it works. So if you're seeing this video, get in. I mean, whatever you need to do to appropriate the money, I really think um, this is something you need to do for your operations. This will be the best investment, and I can say this with complete conviction. Um, one of the reasons I know this stuff is so valuable is when the oil field took a nosedive last April due to COVID and, and bottomed out at you know negative 37 bucks a barrel. I mean, you know how many clients Greasebook lost? We lost zero clients. So out of 260 clients, there were zero cancellations. We didn't even feel it. As most operators came to us and said, I mean, we obviously respect privacy, but here's an email received, you know, thankfully we already had the grease book in place before current conditions set in. I can't imagine trying to manage through this crisis without it as a tool to help guide us. So this is how I knew what we were doing is creating real value for the independent operator. When things tightened up and operators were forced to prioritize their resources, grease book came near the top. So again, Greasebook isn't just some nice to have, it's a need to have. It's a fundamental part of creating your most profitable, capital efficient operation. And for the right operator, there's an insane amount of ROI. I can say without you know, any doubt in my mind, if you're a small operator and you're not using uh, the Greasebook, it, you're really wasting money. Like I said, it took us 10 to 12 days for us to pay off that first month. And I don't know how many more months going forward. Um, just in the production, just, just noticing in real time that there is an issue, extremely important. And being able to see those reports and be able to print those reports and, and shoot it to your investors, you know, in a blink. Uh, it's, it's hard to, to, to put a dollar sign on that, but a heck of a lot more than what they're charging for sure. I think Greasebook is absolutely cost effective um, for really any operator, whether small, medium, or large. Uh, and, and really, um, you know, I think you make your money back just in the, the time spent at the end of the month, um, you know, be, see the, the time saved at the end of the month uh, when you don't have to do a bunch of tedious work in Excel and, and, and the time saved throughout the month in, in handwriting. Um, data down or calling it in or, or punching it into a, a computer. Um, so between your field staff time and, and your, your administrative time at the end of the month, you're absolutely money ahead in my view. Uh, and I, I don't see how that wouldn't be the case for anyone else. Again, you know, we have more than 260 operators using the app in their operations in more than 16 oil producing states. And all of the app is customized for each individual operator because you know all operations are a little bit different. My guess is if there's something particular your field requires, we've probably seen it and we can most likely accommodate it. So I know you might probably have a lot of questions which we can answer on the phone, but I'd like to go over some common questions with you first. So 
Uh, first question we get a lot, you know, my pumpers operate in areas with no cellular connectivity. Does the app work offline? So yes, I mean, the app works completely offline and many times your pumper don't even know that they're offline. So the pumper retains historical access to, uh, you know, all their production information, all their comments, all their, you know, historical well test, everything on the app offline. They continue to edit and enter their, their, their information, their product and, uh, production info. And then when they get back on the road, back on the highway, back into town, back to the doghouse, wherever, the app automatically syncs up in the background. So second question, do my pumpers have to remember to sync their data? Do they need to take the, you know, their phone out of their truck or their iPad out of their truck and bring it inside and sync it up? No. Uh, the app is constantly searching for an internet connection and it can sync up over the cellular network or Wi-Fi. And assuming, you know, the app sense is one of those, uh, you know, connections nearby, uh, it'll sync up automatically for them. So again, trying to eliminate any reason that your pumper, any excuse your pumper doesn't have is dated to you on time, real time. Um, that's the idea. Um, can the grease book do dual product tanks, wash tanks, color cuts? Absolutely. So, um, you know, there's important uh, things, but, you know, between transferring, you know, maybe uh, pulling bottom or, you know, doing a sweep and pushing water to a different tank. Uh, things like that, color cuts, uh, you know, selling a load out of a color cut tank. There's a lot of complexity when you get both oil and water in those tanks and grease book handles it flawlessly. Really nice. Um, does the app track tubing and casing pressures at the well level? Absolutely. Um, it'll track anything you throw at it. So anything at the lease level, at the well level, no matter what form your production takes, no matter what form of production you acquire in the future, no matter what form of um, lift mechanism that's currently on your field or, you know, that eventually will be put on, you know, your production, the app will track it all. So completely customizable. Does the app do well tests, barrel tests, bucket tests? Absolutely. Will it do my allocations? Of course, we do your allocations and uh, downtime tracking. We've got a really nice, uh, you know, uh, downtime tracker. So we're going to track all your downtime. We'll track the wells that are shut in. We'll bring forward all your most recent well tests. And obviously bringing all that information together, we can have some, all your allocations for you. So really cool and really simple. Um, tracking of injection wells and water sweeps, like secondary recovery. We absolutely do all that. Um, you know, we'll track your pressures and the total amount of, uh, you know, water being pushed into these wells. Uh, disposal wells, do we track disposal wells? Yes. Um, you know, it's very important, especially in states like Oklahoma, you know, we're injecting into some different formations and it's, um, really important. Some of the state agencies and commissions that we're not only tracking the amount of water we're pushing into these formations, but also the amount of pressures and the, and the app's going to make quick work of all that and all your reporting for you. Um, do we do BS and W tickets, tank transfers, lease transfers for split loads and water hauls? Yes, we do all that. So lease transfers for split loads. Sometimes you get two separate leases, two separate batteries, and you know, both of them have half tank full and you want to combine them. So uh, you'll do like an, uh, you know, a transfer between batteries to form a full load and the app's going to handle all that for you. So we've seen a lot. We've been doing this for a long time. Uh, let's track, you know, we track compressors, flares, buyback meters, CO2 ejection. Absolutely. So again, any piece of equipment you have at the lease level, at the well level, you know, we're going to track for you. Any long-term contracts? Absolutely not. Everything's month to month. A very important component of our, of our deal with you and kind of how we, how we see things and how we want to do business. Um, will it work on both iPhones and Android? Absolutely. So iPhones, iPads, Android, Android tablets. Uh, a lot of people want to know, you know, will it still work on laptops? The answer is we still work on laptops. We are a mobile first solution. We prefer your pumper on, on mobile. And if he gives it, Half, an, half a chance, 10 minutes, he'll never turn back to the laptop. But obviously some people want to run it on laptops in the field and, and we could definitely do that. And obviously on the executive side, you can run it on laptops and PCs and Macs or whatever else you need to run it on. So no problem. Um, are my pumpers limited only to the wells they pump? So yes, pumpers only see the, the pump, the, the wells to which they pump. They don't need to see your entire organization. And the neat thing is if you've got like um, two pumpers tending the same, you know, well, and one guy's on for a, a couple days and then he's off and a relief pumper steps in, those pumpers can see each other's comments and see each other's data. So no more need to hang uh, hand off gauge books. And so this, this, you know, transparency is important, not just pumper to office, but also pumper to pumper and pumper to supervisor. And the app's going to take care of all that for you. Um, Will I be able to give access to working interest owners and other people outside of my organization? Yes. And we can give them read only access and only access to the wells that they're, you know, uh, in, uh, invested in. So what kind of info do we get started? Just basic info, tank sizes, uh, well names, mm, pupper contact info. And we'll generally from that, we can, we can pretty much, uh, you know, turnkey everything else out for you. 
Uh, can we bring in SCADA information? Absolutely, we work with more than a dozen SCADA providers. It's a different conversation, but the idea is to bring in all that SCADA. And then you've got the human component or human element, which you know you can't really SCADA eyes. You can't really you know run through sensors like run tickets and and perhaps well test or um, just certain elements that you're not going to put a sensor on because it's expensive sometimes. Um, comments, for example, is another item, which is human element. So again, bringing in all that SCADA, bringing all that, you know, all that SCADA into the grease book, all right here. Um, your pumper now has access to all that information. You have access to all that information. And again, it's one spot for everything all under the same umbrella. Really cool. Uh, so we got some really complicated allocations. Can we handle these? Yes, we, we handle a lot of complicated allocations. Um, be best for you to call these in and let us take a look at these before we say yes or no. But like a lot of things in East Texas, there's like a lot of old, you know, production and it's kind of, um, for lack of a better word, Frankenstein together. Just a lot of things have been happening over time and complications can get ugly. So our allocations can get ugly. Um, and we can, we can do just about everything you throw at us. Um, does your system talk with our accounting software? Absolutely. We've talked with more than half a dozen accounting software systems on the market. Uh, and uh, there's no accounting system we've come up to that we're, that we're not able to import our information to. So all the major ones, uh, we most definitely do import um, uh, you know, your production data. Um, will I be able to file state and government forms with the app? Yes, we've got you know, half a dozen or a dozen forms that we're producing automated already. Uh, if there's something we don't do, let us see it and we'll check it out. And our turnaround time is really quick. We can get these. We're adding forms all the time. And again, there's a lot of, a lot of efficiency to be gained by you know, taking care of those forms automatically for you. And we're constantly adding those to the system. So uh, we got some complicated compressors, equipment, lift mechanisms in the field. We'll be able to track this type of info. Absolutely. Um, will you do my accounting for me? <laughs> Absolutely not. So we are set out to be uh, the number one oil and gas production software on the market. And that's important because, again, like we talked about earlier, you do have some systems or some platforms. They, they want to do accounting and they want to do you know, engineering decline curves. And they want to do production. And what ends up happening when you try to do all this stuff is you don't do any of it all that well. And I think the user becomes very frustrated. So, again, the grease book will talk to any of the other systems that you choose. Like maybe you're like, hey, like I'm a Ph.D. win user and I also want to use, you know, Spotfire over here. And I'm an OG Sys accounting user. So you can use whatever you want. And the grease book will play nicely with all that and will give you the best production solution. Um, and that's the idea. So, um, but we won't do your accounting for you. But if you need some recommendations, we'll be happy to, to make a recommendation for you on an accounting system. Um, can you help us with a run ticket reconciliation each month? So by the fact that we are sort of gathering all your production data, we can absolutely do you know, your run ticket reconciliation. We're capturing images of those run tickets in the field. Your pumper is gleaning a little bit of information off those run tickets and we'll capture all that and we can reconcile all that and we'll store all that for you for forever. Um, you know, we never relinquish that data. It's, it's stored there forever. Um, are we limited to a certain amount of users? No, you can bring as many users as you want onto the app. Will the grease book highlight or alert me to any exceptions in my operations? Absolutely. So we've got a really uh, amazing alert engine, which is sifting through all your data all the time in real time. And anytime there's a, a downtime or negative production or a comment in the field or production is falling off its average running you know, levels, um, you can set all these uh, parameters up customizable. Maybe a piece of equipment falls outside of a, a certain operating range, a high and a low. Um, it's really cool and you can set up who in your operations is going to receive these alerts so you can receive them in text message format or like a summary email a few times a day however you want it and you can set up you know uh, each battery is different or a group of batteries so extremely flexible extremely powerful and that 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 feature alone I, I think has the ability to not only you know um, make you a ton more money but just save you a ton of money through through oversights and downtime and thing like that could have been, you know, uh, potentially avoided. So, um, so we can absolutely highlight exceptions in your operations for you. Um, and that means if you've got, you know, hundred wells, 500 wells, you don't have to go dig into each well, um, we'll present you the issues and we'll surface those to the top. So you can focus just on the issues. Can you generate Excel based reports? Yeah, everything. And, and we'll go out into CSV and Excel. No problem. Can you create PR reports for Texas Railroad Commission? Absolutely. So if any of you that were in charge of like state reports or, you know, Texas Railroad Commission reports, those are a booger, man. They're complex and we can produce an EDI file, which is just an electronic file, which you can drag and drop to the Texas Railroad Commission website or a PDF, which for, from which you can download and submit it that way too. So really makes quick work of that stuff. Really nice. 
Where is everything stored? Um, we elected to store everything in Microsoft Azure. Uh, Microsoft Azure runs, uh, from what I've read, 40% of Fortune 100 business critical activities. So we went with the best. And again, um, you know, all that stuff is the ideas that happens behind the curtain for you so that you don't have to mess with it. You focus on your core competency, which is oil and gas production. We're going to take care of the rest. But we do store everything on the cloud. Uh, it's backed up hourly. And if, if you want to back that up on a local system on your side, you can do that too. So it's several redundancies, four or five different redundancies, whether it's on the app, on your desktop, on our cloud. If you want to push it to your database in-house, you could do that too. So um, that's where it's all stored. Where are we located? We are headquartered in Oklahoma City. So that's where, that's where I grew up and that's where we're, where we're headquartered. Um, what if we decide to leave? What happens to all our data? Um, it's part of our, our bill of rights that your data belongs to you and uh, you can take it with you. We'll, we'll export it in Excel or CSV and, and um, that didn't happen very often, but if it does, um, you know, your data is your data and, and, and we'll, 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 get you, we'll get you your data. So um, what's your privacy policy look like? You won't sell our data, will you? Absolutely not. We take privacy extremely seriously. A new well comes online, whatever. You know, that's your information. It's your production. It's your business. It ain't, ain't you know, the business of anybody else. And we take that very seriously. How about backups and security? So we're doing backups you know, constantly throughout the day. And uh, we take security very seriously too. Everybody's got their own username and password and, and things like that. So... Um, how can I invest in the grease book? Well, we're not currently open to investment, but um, you know, you never know. So uh, I'm in this for, for the long haul. I really love what I, what I do. And um, you know, uh, our goal, unlike some other companies, is just, you know, some entrepreneurs, they just want to flip, flip their business, you know, in two or three years, moving down the road to the next opportunity. We've been at this for a long time now, and that's not our goal. We love what we do. We love with who we work with and um, we're here for the long haul. So um, are there any long-term contracts? Absolutely not. So everything, again, is month to month. You can cancel any time. And finally, sounds too good to be true. What are the exact terms of the guarantee? So again, 60-day money-back guarantee will set you up. No setup fees, no training fees, free help desk calls. You have nothing to lose by trialing it. Uh, we're trying to eliminate any sort of friction and a potential excuse for you to not have your most profitable capital efficient operation. So, you know, there's a reason we are now the fastest growing app in the oil patch. Um, there obviously was a real need for the app. So all that said, again, you know, book a call and let us get you a price. We'd love nothing more than to help your business become the most profitable capital efficient version of it possible. So with all that being said, thank you so much for your time today and your attention. You know, we very much look forward to speaking with you. So until then, good luck and operate safe. Bye now. I think the only obstacle uh, for us was the fear of change and, and how easily adapted this solution would be by our field staff, some of whom are, uh, you know, of a generation that did most things on paper. Um, but actually, in the end, it, it was received and taken up very quickly um, by our field staff um, at all levels uh, with, with no resistance, really. And, and after a month, we were completely done with the old way of doing things on paper. The obstacle that almost prevented me from using Greasebook mainly was just kind of fear of implementation and fear of the unknown. We'd been using the same process to gather data for 30 or 40 years with really no change and there was some fear of using technology and the security and the ease of use and how it would work. The obstacle that I considered on whether to use Facebook or not was just the cost and um, then I weighed that with the time that we were spending uh, using our own system and it uh, seemed to be an offset. So one of the obstacles I had to, to overcome to start working with Greasebook was, um, I'm just a very small company. It's just me and uh, all my pumpers are contract pumpers. And I was really just struggling with um, the idea of, am I big enough to use something like this yet? Am I ready for something? Am I gonna get in over my head? Um, and I was worried that uh, my pumpers being, you know, in their 50s and 60s, that they might not take to the technology or the change. And so, you know, those were two of the, two of the really the main obstacles that I had to get over before trying Greasebook. The, the ease of using Greasebook has exceeded my expectations. So um, 
you know, to take guys who have never used this kind of software before, have never used any kind of production um, software before in the past, like you would if you were working for a major, um, you know, going from writing it down by hand or using uh, Excel to, you know, using an app on your phone or an iPad was going to be a big hurdle, I thought. And so um, once we rolled it out, um, it really surprised me at how easy it was for the pumpers to use it and how quickly they were able to, um, you know, get used to it. And they really like it. They don't have any more um, work at the end of the month. They don't have to mail anything in. Um, it's very accurate. They can take pictures. We have a problem. And I know about it right then. And, you know, like I said, they almost all the pumpers are trying to get the other operators they pump for on board with Breezebook.